in the last video we introduced how to find basis vectors in spherical coordinates so we found theta hat to be let's just view it visually what's the theta direction right well the theta direction is just the change in R say we had OP vector and now we have a new vector which is OP primed right so the theta hat direction or the theta direction is just basically the change in R you, you can look at the vector PP primed right so PP primed well theta hat was just PP primed divided by the modulus of PP primed right we can restate this in a different manner we can say PP primed is just basically the change in this R vector the change in R vector as we change the coordinate theta to theta plus d theta so that's just saying the change in R with respect to theta only right the change in R as we only change theta right that's just the PP prime vector divided by the modulus of PP prime vector is just del R by del theta right now we will take a look at Christoffel symbols so what are Christoffel symbols well a Christoffel symbol looks something like say gamma of say alpha mu nu or you can say gamma of an upper index and lower index i j well this can take many forms of different ranks but now let's take a look at the definition of gamma say we have a basis vector say e i so in tensor calculus we want divide by the pp prime vector right so let's say we have a vector e i this would represent the change as we change i coordinate in the r vector right so this would definitely be del r by del x i right so basically this is just what we found in spherical coordinates right if in spherical coordinates theta hat was just del r by del theta divided by the length right but in in tensor calculus we were we are not dividing by the length because we are putting it as a vector you see the vector sign here but when we find a unit vector we would place a hat sign on the top right so now let's take a look at the differential of this basis vector divided by the differential of xi so we are just differentiating the ei basis vector with respect to the xi coordinate sorry xj coordinate xj coordinate um, let's just remove it and write it again so you are finding the differentiation of this ei basis with respect to xj coordinate that would be that would be in a direction particular direction right so let's represent that 
as a k basis vector right now a vector can be represented say a vector v it can be represented by its basis vectors e1 plus cap e2 plus many more right so k right here would be summed over now we know the Einstein summation convention of summing over right we basically have say we have a component it should have a top index right here now we're asking that what is that component right when we differentiate a basis vector with respect to the coordinate say xj well the components are defined to be gamma with k index on the top now we know tensor equations must balance out the indices so this should be an i and j as the lower indices so that's the definition of our Christoffel symbols right now let's take this idea a bit further what's uh, let's take a look at del by del xj well there's a shorthand notation for it and that is del j this is what we what we use in tensor calculus and the gamma I'm stating that the gamma are symmetric by which I mean Christoffel symbols of k i j is the same as Christoffel symbols of j i with k as the upper index why is that well it's because in vector calculus you must have learned that del by del x j and then del by del x i are just swappable like I mean you can write it the same as del by del x i del by del x j right so what is the EI basis? Well, EI, as we have learned near the beginning of this video, well, EI is just del by del XI, right? Well, I'm not writing this R right here. R is just, say, a vector, right? So, EI is the operator del by del xi this is what we are stating so since this del by del xj del by del xi can be taken one after the other which is why we are saying that gammas are symmetric the Christoffel symbols are symmetric now let's write our equation Let's write this equation in the shorthand notation form. So that's just del j e i, which is equals to the Christoffel symbols gamma of i j with upper index k e k, right? Now let's do the dot product on both sides. Let's do dot it with um, say EL and then dot this with EL. So this would become let's write the right hand side first. This is just basically gamma of i j k and then this is just e k dot e l which is the g k l I have shown that in one of previous videos now let's take a look at this left part this can be written as del j e i dot e l 
minus del j um, del j e i sorry no del j e l e l this whole thing dotted with e i right that's the same thing we just use the product rule uh, in calculus now we can write this equation as <laughs> um, gamma of i j k g k l is equals to del j e i dot e l is just g i l minus this thing right here del j e l is basically what how we define the Christoffel symbols right here right so this del j e l by replacing the indices we will write it as gamma k on the top and then this should be l j because the lower indices are l j l and j and then e k vector dotted with this part right here e i right so this can be simplified a bit further we can write it as del j e i l del j g i l minus gamma l j k and this would be g k l right now let's take the gamma this Christoffel symbol right here on the right, left hand side so this would turn out to be gamma of k i j g k l plus gamma of k oh let's just see this this of k l j g k l sorry this should have been an i because right here we have dot products of k and i this should be i this should have been i and this should be i as well is nothing but del j g i l now what we will do is take a look at the right hand side we have j i and l let's write j i l let's write j i l and then j i l again now we have j i l we want to be able to find the other two cyclic permutations of j i l which is basically saying say we have j i l in the first place next i will take i l j next i will take l j i right and then we get back to our j i l's i l j and so on so we have other two permutations of this del g we can write it as del i g l j right that's one combination here and then the other combination will be del l g del l g j i right now how do we write the left hand side well it's just taking a look at the first equation right here let's just box it down we'll take a look at the first equation and try to write our seconds and third equation using this um, using this equation as the model right so 
this should be let's take a look at the J index well the J index appears in the second bottom index of this Christoffel symbol and the second bottom index of the first Christoffel symbol so this should be plus let's write gammas and G's gammas and G's now the J appears in the uh, these two places right here as we can see so our J equivalent index is I so I's will appear here and here the second index of the two Christoffel symbols now let's take a look at these K's right here K's K's and K's well the K's are not in the right hand side of the equation so we can place them in the second equation K K K K right now let's take a look at this L L index but before that we're going to take a look at I vector well the I vector appears as the second index in the second G and the first index first lower index in the first gamma so our I equivalent index is just L so we will place the L's here and here right and finally we have a missing spot that is our L right L equivalent to J now where does the L appear well L appears as the first bottom index of the second Christoffel symbol and the second bottom index of the first G so this should be J because our L equivalent vector is J uh, sorry index is J and so here should be another J let's write it down again this should be another J right so that's our G I L J now let's write our third equation well the third equation you can use the similar reasoning and you can find the third equation which would end up being um, let's write the gammas and G's first gammas and G gamma and G let's fill out the equation should be um, I's and L's here K and J here and then K on the top this should be K on the top K and I and this J well the second vectors I appear in the second index and the first index so this should be J right here and L right so that's our equation we have three of our equations right now now let's permute these let's use the symmetric condition of the Christoffel symbols and write this equation as gamma we'll just swap the indices it should be I L K G of K J plus gamma of I J we just swap the indices and then we have a top index as K then we have G and K L this is nothing but equals to del I G K L sorry is the del I G K L is it really um that's just L J right so it should be L J have we mixed up our equation um KLs it should have been LJ right 
Should have been LJ. Mm, let's see. Where have we made a mistake? Um. Maybe we rewrote one of our equations. I guess. Let's see. KJ No, we have this J index and K index right here. So this should have been J is right. This should be J L I L J I L J It should be I L J right Now, let's add these equations, these two equations, right? So what do we have when we add these two equations? Well, we can see that this term right here is also present in this equation right here. So that should be twice gamma of ij, k, and then this is g, k, l right and then these two terms this this term and this term are not identical so we can write an s plus gamma of i l g k j and this is just k plus gamma l j k g k i this is nothing but equals to this term right here del i g l j plus del j g i l right now let's subtract this uh, this equation this equation right here let's subtract this equation from this equation so what do we have well immediately we can see that this ilkj this term right here and this term cancels out right so since we are subtracting this equation from this equation we can cancel off these terms right likewise i can cancel off these this equation this term right here and this term why because this L and J, we can swap them and form J and L. So these right here cancels out. So finally, we are left with a minus del L G J I at the end. So all we have is this gamma of K I J G K L is equals to half of del i g l j plus del j g i l minus um minus del l g j i right that's our equation now let's just multiply the whole equation with um say g of ml right let's multiply this equation by g of ml now we know we can use the matrix tensor to contract our indices in a tensor equation right we can uh, sorry not contract we can lower our upper indices using the metric tensor so we have g of ml on both sides now this equation becomes gamma of kij and then this um, kl 
and ML else cancel out, we are left with as these two are the inverses of each other, we are left with the chronicle delta of k bottom index and m upper index index. So this would be half of GML. We're basing the basically bringing this GML on the front since orientation intensity equations doesn't matter. So we have del i glj plus del j gil minus del l gji. Right? Now setting equal to setting uh, computing these Christoffel symbols this this Christoffel symbol basically forces us to change our index from m equals to k or k equals to m so we are gonna write gamma of m i j right this is nothing but this part right here I'm not writing that again now let's do some more computation now let's multiply this whole equation gamma of m i j let's multiply it by g k m again this would be half of g k m g m l and then this partial derivative part right here right so this part right here this turns out to be let's take a look let's first take a look at the left hand side on the left hand side we, we know we can lower or upper in indices so m's cancel out and then we are left with gamma k i j right so this is equals to half these m's cancel out and since they are the inverses of each other we can write chronic delta of l k of this partial part right here which is basically saying set l equals to k that just turns out to be del i of g i because l should be equals to k since this l should be equals to k we can write g i k plus now taking a look at this term this should be del i g l should be equals to k k j minus del k because l should be equals to k g j i right now let's change our indices a bit let's write a new equation say gamma of b c a we're gonna use this equation as a model and then write our new equation well this becomes half of let's write the del g's plus del g and then minus del g and so this should be um, we know b's let's see k they go here here and here so we can write b here and then b here and then b here right now let's take a look at the eyes will I appear here and then here and then here <laughs> i is equivalent to c so we can write c here and then c here and then c here oops this should have been a j not an i sorry this should have been an j i k this should be j right this should be j 
can be J. So J is where we need. Okay, we have the C's in two spots, right? They are the correct spots. Now we need to fill out the A's on the missing spots, right? Maybe we have missed out a C. Let's see. I I appears here, here, and here. So I is equivalent to C. We have placed the C here. We need to place a C here. And then a C here as well. Now the missing spot should be A's, right? This should be an A. Sorry. Not here. This should have been A. No. This was the second index. So this should have been A, B. And A right here. Right. This is our equation. We can confirm our A index by taking a look at J. Right. Say J. Well, J is appear here. So we have placed an A here. J appears here. Oh, this should have been BA. Sorry. So this should be BA. Place the J here. Because there is a J here. We've placed an A here. And then we had an AC. Well, J appears here. So A should be the first index of this G. Right. So our equation is correct. Now, let's take a look at maybe um, we know that our metric tensor is just basically symmetric. In one of our previous videos, we have established this fact. So let's change this equation a bit further. We can say VCA is nothing but half of del A GCB plus del C GAB minus del B GAC, right? So we are good to go. Now let's take a look at our infinitesimal length ds square is what is the s square equals to say in Cartesian coordinates right we have x1 and say x2 here what is this infinitesimal length in um, say a length ds say ds what is the square of the length well that's just basically dx1 square plus dx2 square plus dx3 square right we have established this in our in one of our previous videos so this becomes chronic delta of mn dx m dx n right now let's have uh, another coordinate system which is curvilinear meaning we have curved coordinates and that can be written that can be transformed from Cartesian coordinates into this curved coordinates by using an equation right so say we have a curved coordinate system all of them are curved right we can easily transform from Cartesian coordinates into this coordinate system right here let's say this coordinate system has coordinates y1 y2 and so on so on so on so this equation could be modified now since x m I'm saying we can transform from Cartesian coordinates into the curvilinear, co curvilinear coordinates meaning that x m say x1 or 2 or 3 is just a function of say y r right that's basically what I'm saying well we can transform so it must be the case that our x coordinates are just a function of the y coordinates right since we can transform them we can write the transformation matrix 
and then we can find equations xm which can be written in terms of the coordinates y now let's write a uh, differential equation say dxm we will use the chain rule we can write dxm by sorry let's use the del how about that let's use del um not really let's use d say dxm we'll use the chain rule and since x is a function of y we can say del xm by del yr del yr right we can easily write this equation using the chain rule now let's say um, we want to change from dxn into y coordinates so this should be dxn we can write it as del xn by and we are saying that xn is a function of ys right that our new coordinate is a function of a new y coordinate so we can write del ys times del ys right these two equations are equally valid now we can write our ds square equation we should be del mn and then we have we need to change this dxm using this equation right here and it should be del xm del yr and then we have del yr so next we can write dxn so this should be dxn divided by dys into dys now since changing from one coordinate system to another coordinate system we can write say a length ds square is just basically g a uh, metric tensor of second rank times the say d sorry let's not write this first let's just arrange our previous equation d square is just delta chronic delta m n we can write del x m by del y r times del x n by del y s we can write del y r and then have a del y s right now we know we have established this in our previous videos that we can write it as ds square of g this is nothing but rs of del y r del y s right so our g of rs is nothing but delta mn del xm del y r del x n by del y s right now let's write say a new equation say the metric tensor g a b right we want to be able to express our christoffel symbols right in terms of the metric tensor in terms of the differential of the metric tensors so let's write g a b what's g a b well let's first Sim uh, make GRS a little bit more simpler since M this, since we have this chronic delta of MN we are forcing ourselves to write M equals to N so this becomes del X um, say del X we can write del X uh, say M's right del X M del X M divided by since we are putting m equals n del y r del y s right now gab 
will be some say a new coordinate say yk right and then del yk this should be divided by del x a this should be divided by del x b right we have used these equation as a model for our g a b right now now you should remember that this y are one co are in one coordinate system and this x is in another coordinate system right now let's differentiate del g a b by del x c why because look at this term right here del c g a b we're basically finding this term of the Christoffel symbols right so this is nothing but differentiating with respect to x c so we are going to do the product rule in this g a b metric tensor so this should be del y k by del x a into del square of y k by del x c del x b plus del y k by del x b into del squared of y k divided by del x c del x a right let's just write this equation a little bit easier del x c del x a now let's write this as a tensor right this term right here as a tensor what would be the corresponding tensor say we uh, define it to be a, a tensor what is the rank well what are the indices of that tensor well this should be a c b right we have the lower indices a c and b well this case we are not just mentioning the case why because for this case we had a chronic delta right that should have been cancelled out but we have forced our chronic deltas to change our this case from another variable into k right so this was basically say we have g a b we had the k but we didn't write g k of a b right because we had chronic delta and we forced our equation to set to change our index from say um, say from another index to k right so we essentially had a chronic delta here of say k and another variable i say so we changed we erased our chronic delta and set our k is equals to i which is why we didn't have the k index for the g right because the chronic delta already cancels out the k's and i's likewise here we won't include our case in the tensor a so let's write the next term the next term would be another tensor a since they are of the same form and we can write it as b c a now we have our del c g a b as a of a c b plus b of b c a right Let's look at the Christoffel symbols of gamma B C A. This is nothing but half of what was our equation. Well our equation said that gamma of B C A was just del A G C B. Well del A G C B is nothing but A of C A B plus A of B A C right because del let's take a look at this term del A G C B del A G C B well del A G C B if we write it in in terms of this equation what does it become del A 
and then we have C's and B's so what we are saying is set C equals to A let's take a look at this equation right here so set C equals to A we have the middle index as A and then set A equals to C so A is must be C and then set B equals to B B's are B's right here so this is B plus we'll do the same thing we'll put C equals to A so the middle index is A and then we have B here and a C here so you I think you can get the idea of what we're doing right here right we're changing the equation by using this equation as the model and finding our corresponding differentials of the metric tensor so likewise doing that we have this del C G A B which we recently found del C G A B is nothing but right here 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 A C B plus A B C A and then subtract it from subtract it from uh, where is the Christoffel symbols well, subtract it from del B G A C which is nothing but minus A of C B A minus A of A B C now you should realize that this equation has the second order partial derivatives now the second order partial derivative say del square of del x c del x b is just the same as del square del x b del x c right we can swap them so using that principle we can say we can swap these second uh, the second and third indices so let's see do we have C as the first indices yes we do so we can interchange A and B and write it as B A so these terms cancel out and then let's see we have a B here and a C here we can swap these indices and write half of 2 A B C A right and then these terms cancel out so we're left with just that so gamma of B C A is just half of that which is just A B C A right now what is B C A well gamma of B C A is just del Y K we will use this equation as our model what is the equation right this equation well since we already have B C A sorry not this equation not this right here sorry we will use this equation this gamma of BCA no not that sorry uh, what is our BCA as partials um oh yeah we will use this equation so this no not that sorry um where is the gamma of BCA oh yes 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 I found it yeah this one we have this use this u this equation gas a a of a c b is equals to del y k divided by del x a del square of y k divided by del x c del x b right and we already had a b c a which is just this term right here right 
so our gamma of BCA is just this term right here so this should be del yk by del xb into del square yk by del xc del xa right so that's our gamma term right here now let's use the metric tensor in this equation let's write g and mv let's multiply by g mv on both sides uh, g mv right now what is g mv we know g a b's right what's g a b's well that's del x a del x b by del y k y k del y k how well we have used this equation right here that g a b right We have used this equation, and now since um, GAB is just basically the inverse, the inverse of G upper index AB, so we can easily write that, write the inverse of the previous equation, which is the G lower index AB, right? So we need GMB. So what is GMB? Well, we just substitute, we just replace our indices, right? So this should be del xm del xb sorry yeah yeah del xb divided by del yk del yk now since we are doing this equation this should be we need to contract sorry we need to lower or upper our index in the Christoffel symbols since we are multiplying it by the metric tensor so this should be m and then B A on the bottom, sorry, C A on the bottom. Since B's and B's cancel out. And then this is equals to del Y K by del X B del square Y K by del X C del X A. And then G M B is just del X M del X B divided by del Y K by del Y K. Right. Now this is del y k is and this del y k is cancel out. Del x b is and del x b is cancel out. We are left with del x m by del y k del square of y k divided by del x c del x a. All right, that's our proof of gamma of m c a. In the next video, we will be talking about the Einstein equivalence principle and the geodesic equation and we will see how this term appears in the geodesic equation alright so see you in the next video